Uh, fantastic to be here on the back end of what's been a, the best ever year for Irish tourism. And what I'm going to do is uh, three things this morning. The reflect on last year, this year really, on the performance for 2017 overall in my main market area. I want to talk about the marketing plans for 2018. And at the end then, I'm just going to try and paint a picture of what success will look like when we're standing here in 12 months' time looking back on what success looks like in 2018. But I just want to say thank you to everybody, uh, our own team, the industry, for all the work that's been put in through the course of 2017. The final numbers are counted for this year. We expect to see the overseas visitors spending 4.94 billion euros. That's an increase of 6.5%, driven by 8.98 million visitors, an increase of almost 3%, supporting 225,000 jobs in Ireland. Now, Tourism Ireland is responsible for marketing the island of Ireland, and when you put the figures together for both jurisdictions, we expect to see overseas visitors by the end of this year having spent 5.78 billion euros. That's an increase of 6.7%, driven by a massive number of 10.65 million visitors, supporting over 280,000 jobs across the length and breadth of this island, making it our most important indigenous industry. And to put it into perspective, there's about 6.5 million people live on this island, and that puts that number in perspective. Now, we break down our market performance into four main market areas, mainland Europe, North America, Great Britain and Australia and developing markets. And just to take a whiz through each of those, mainland Europeans are the largest spenders in tourism into Ireland. The island of Ireland will see 1.9 billion spent by mainland Europeans, an increase of 7.6%, driven by 3.4 million visitors through the course of 2017. North America has seen another spectacular year, spend of 1.67 billion euros, an increase of 14.5%, driven by 1.83 million visitors, an increase of 16.7%. Great Britain, still a very important market for us, a spend of 1.5 billion euros, driven by 4.68 million visitors, a slight decline this year, a lot of that currency related, and a number of Brexit factors, which I'm going to talk about later on when I'm talking about Great Britain. Australia and developing markets uh, growing rapidly, a spend of 678 million euros, an increase of 12%, driven by 705,000 visitors, an increase of 16.7%. So some very large increases in there. And what's very important is market diversification. And to explain this, I want to show you a little table. Back in 2014, we said we were going to embark on a strategy of market diversification. It meant emphasising and marketing harder in markets that delivered visitors that stayed longer and spent more. That meant putting a bigger emphasis on North America and mainland Europe. Now back in 2014, you can see mainland Europeans were the biggest spenders with 1.4 billion, Britain with 1.3, North America with 1 billion, and Australia and developing markets with 506 million. Now wind the clock forward three years, and you can see the changes. We've seen some significant increases, but the biggest strategic shift is North America now ranks second in terms of revenue profile. So mainland Europe has seen a large increase of 37%, massive increase of 62% over the last three years in North American spend. Great Britain is still up 16% over the last three years, and Australia developing markets uh, rapidly growing 34% over the last three years. So this is market diversification in action. Uh, it's looking to grow all our markets, but certainly putting a bigger emphasis on those that deliver visitors that stay longer and spend more. So let's just look at the market environment as we head towards 2018. There are three key things to mention. I've talked about market diversif diversification already, and we'll continue that path in 2018 and beyond. Sorry, I go too quick there. Um, it's really important that we keep Ireland messaging out there forefront, to the forefront of consumers' minds. Uh, really important we continue to invest. It's a very competitive marketplace out there. And we also need to ensure that we continue to work on regions and seasons. Our urban areas are really busy, and there's plenty of opportunity in the off-season, in, in rural uh, Ireland in the, in the off-season. There are a number of positive factors that are working in our favour. Consumer confidence in most of our main markets is actually still very good. We're delighted, as Joan mentioned, that the government has retained the VAT rate at 9%. We have great opportunities, we'll talk later on, in terms of screen tourism. We have the biggest project on the big screen in Star Wars and the biggest project on the small screen in Game of Thrones. And the air access picture looks positive heading into 2018. And just to focus a little bit on that and what it means in numbers, next summer season we'll see 569,000 seats every single week coming into the island of Ireland. It's too many new routes to put up on the chart here, I've just put a sample of them. We know that our Lingus are opening a new gateway next year in Seattle. Uh, we opened in Philadelphia and Miami later in 2017. Air Canada have a new route coming in from Montreal to Dublin. Uh, Air Canada also announced a new route from Toronto to Shannon. Ryanair put new routes into Germany. 
We've got um, Norwegian Airlines in Helsinki to Dublin, and we're thrilled that Cathay Pacific have launched the first non-stop direct service from Hong Kong to Dublin starting next July four times a week, and that gives us a major opportunity in that part of the world. So very, very positive. 3% up next year, but to put that in perspective, that's 34% more than it was in the summer of 2011. There are challenges. For example, our brand health is in decline, our share of voice is falling because of the lack of investment. We know competitiveness can become an issue. Sterling has declined by 20%, but we need to be sure that value for money is the watchword as we go through 2018. We know from Smith Travel Research that Ireland hotels are now some of the busiest in Europe, and we have to ensure that we work on that regional and seasonal story. And Brexit is on everyone's lips at the moment, and I just want to talk to you about this for a moment. The UK voted to leave the European Union in the middle of last year. There's three things that we did. We went straight out to the market. I held a range of meetings the week afterwards. We engaged Red Sea to conduct regular polls for us to assess the mood of British consumers and their intentions to travel. We've done three such polls over the last 18 months. There's some headlines that they're, they're telling us. First of all, the British are a bit more wary about travelling. They're looking for value for money. They're likely to stay less than they might have intended a year or two ago. And they're looking to downtrade on the accommodation type as well. So value for money is the watchword for the British customer in 2018. The second thing we did was we engaged in collaboration with industries. We worked very closely with the Irish Tourist Industry Confederation and many of the membership bodies that are here today, um, the Irish Hotels Federation, the ITOA, and we've held two Brexit summits so far in London. We'll hold another one in February 2018, along with our partners in the European Tour Operators Association and UK Inbound, which is the umbrella body for UK Inbound operators. And it really makes sure that Tourism Ireland is keeping close to the ground to monitor the latest international trends in tourism and travel. The third thing we did was work with our colleagues in Fault Ireland who have put together a superb Get Brexit Ready kit and I'd advise anybody that hasn't got a copy of that, it's available online on the Fault Ireland site to make sure you do get it. If you want to win business in the British market, it's an essential read. So this is a space we'll be keeping a very close eye on as we head into 2018. So, in terms of 2018 itself, uh, what are the key issues? Well, first of all, who are we targeting? Uh, we've introduced these profiles in the past but the main shift we're making in 2018 is that we're putting a bigger emphasis on people who are culturally curious because they are people who are likely to stay longer they're likely to spend more and they're less likely to be impacted by currency fluctuations or economic factors it's not to the detriment of social energizers there are still campaigns out there for them too but a bigger emphasis in 2018 on culturally curious in relation to promotional themes we're pretty clear in relation to you know what the key messages are on the top part, Wild Atlantic Way, Ireland's Ancient East, and Dublin, you saw them in the video earlier on. When we're in Belfast next week, we'll be talking about the Giants Causeway, we'll be talking about Belfast. And across the island of Ireland, we've got the great story of screen tourism, which I'll touch on later on. Now, these aren't the exclusion of everything else. There are lots of niches within there that will be promoted as well. But they're the, the broad themes that we've agreed with our partners in Tourism Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland. So how does that play out across the main market areas? Well, let's take it one each time. In relation to mainland Europe, I want to thank the industry partners that have been part of the German review, an in-depth review of the German market in 2017. And there are three key messages coming out of this. We have to make sure that we keep Ireland forefront to the German customer. It's a very competitive marketplace in what is the second busiest outbound market in the world in terms of global travel. We want to develop new brand partnerships, and I'll show you a few examples of that in a few moments. And the idea there is to bring the tourism message out to an audience that might be necessarily expected. We need to make sure that we dial up things that we know resonate well in Germany from an Irish perspective. Our food story, our culture, our music, our dance. And the prize here is pretty big. I mean, basically, if we can deliver on the success of this plan, we'll see holiday revenue grow by 27% over the next four years. And the great news is that in 2018, we're off to a very good start because the air access picture from Germany next summer is already up 12%. So we have a great opportunity in this market. What will that actually look like? Well, Dirtour, one of the biggest tour operators in the world, and certainly in Germany, we're actually going to partner with Dirtour on their television advertising in the first quarter of next year. That'll have a reach of 20 million people, and that's a 70% greater exposure than we could have achieved on our own. So again, it's working in partnership, working in collaboration, working with people who are keen to work with us. Another example was with Vaud, the German outdoor clothing company. We worked with them in 2017. It brought the message of Ireland, active in nature, the wild Atlantic way to a German audience that maybe necessarily didn't quite expect it. The great outdoors, active in nature, very consistent with both our brand and with the Vaud brand, and there'll be more of that again in 2018. 
In terms of France, two key messages next year, again, keeping Ireland top of mind for the French consumer. I mean, Ireland ranks really strongly in terms of French uh, you know, view of Ireland and their intention to travel at some point. We need to make sure we try and convert that now as opposed to in the future. And car touring being a very big story as well. Our television advertisement will be on national French channels, France 2 and 3, and that will reach 20 million people in the first number of months of 2018 to keep the Ireland message right out there, front and centre. And I want to say congratulations to Irish Ferries with the new WB8, an investment of over 140 million euros, and that will be going on the French uh, corridor over the summer months from July to September. It gives us 60,000 passenger spaces, which is a significant up of 70% in capacity, and we're looking forward to working with Irish Ferries to make that a great success. After France, it comes on to GB, but it's a great opportunity. And remember, car touring, people who bring their cars, more likely to visit the regions, more likely to come off season, and they do spend longer and stay more than people coming on short breaks. Our other European markets in Northern Europe and Southern Europe, really important at delivering seasonal business as well. In excess of 20% of people who come from Spain to Ireland come in for quarter four. It's a similar type of picture as well in the Netherlands. And we'll continue to work with air carriers and tour operators to push the off season as we've done in those markets through 2017 and into 2018. What does the picture look like in mainland Europe this time next year? Success looks like an overseas spend of 2.04 billion euros, an increase of 6% driven by 3.57 million visitors, an increase of 4%. North America, again, I want to thank all the industry partners who have worked on our USA review. That will be formally launched to the industry in January, but I can give you a few sneak previews of what the key issues are that are coming out from that review. The first point is air access, uh, and I'm going to show you some of the numbers uh, in a moment, but there are great opportunities in relation to air access from North America next year. We have to again make sure that we keep Ireland top of mind in what is a very, very competitive marketplace. <laughs> Thirdly, like we showed in Germany earlier on, we want to work to develop new brand partnerships that brings the Ireland message to a new audience that may not have heard it before. And fourthly, with currency fluctuations, you have to remember value for money can go either way and you have to keep that at the forefront of our mind in 2018. Now just take them one by one. The air access picture next year is very strong again. Uh, we will see an 8% increase in, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, I should say, we'll see a 33% increase in holiday revenue if we deliver everything in this strategy from the United States over the next four years. The air access picture is very strong. Next year we've got 21 gateways delivering 62,000 seats. Uh, the United States increasing by 8%, Canada increasing by 15%, and I'll put up an example of some of the routes earlier on, and we'll be working very hard with the carriers to make sure that the inbound leg of those flights is as full as possible. In addition to that, we're going to keep Ireland front and centre by putting a new TV creative into the marketplace that will be seen by 85 million people on CBS, ABC and NBC during the early part of 2018. So based on research we received this year, we tweaked our campaign from last year. We were very much tweaked with an American customer in mind. Uh, I think that will be a great success to be seen by 85 million people in the first quarter of 2018. Uh, working with new brand partnerships, just three examples. Uh, in the off season, we've been working with Amazon.com, huge partner in North America, and, and great to push you know, such a strong uh, off season message in North America, particularly in quarter four. Uh, the Weather Network in Canada have been over here already and have filled in four locations. No one would associate Ireland with the weather, but we're going to do that in Canada and encourage them that it's a great time to come, no matter what the weather. Uh, and they've already been over here, and, and I'm sure that'll go really, really well. And you may have already seen Saks Fifth Avenue, who we worked with this year in New York and Beverly Hills. We had a great showcase in their shop window. It was seen by three and a half million of their top customers, who probably would never have associated with Ireland and Saks Fifth Avenue before. And they're the relationships that we're going to deepen and move into 2018 and explore new opportunities as we move through the calendar year. Of course, traditional is very important too. We're going to be out pounding the pavements. I want to say thank you to all the industry that have been out with us in the US and Canada during 2017. We have 15, 15 cities we're going to be hitting in the US and Canada, and we look forward to your support again. And what does success look like by the end of next year? We see strong growth of 7% in the North American market to 1.78 billion in revenue to the island of Ireland, driven by 1.93 million visitors, an increase of 5%, but a phenomenal number in itself. Given a number of years ago, we were talking about whether we'd ever hit 1 million visitors. Um, on to Great Britain, I mean, there are four key messages in relation to Great Britain next year. First of all, we want to focus primarily Britain, in Britain on the culturally curious, those people who have the capacity to spend more, stay longer, uh, and, and add value. Uh, we want to develop trusted media partnerships, a bit like what I showed you in Germany and the USA already. Competitiveness is the watchword, folks. The value of sterling has fallen by 20%. The average daily rate of hotels here has gone up by about 20% in the last two years. We have to be careful. If we want to grow business in Britain, we have to be as competitive as we were two years ago. 
And finally, there's a great regional and seasonal opportunity in Britain as well, which I'll talk about shortly. In terms of the culturally curious, one example of a partner that we'll work with next year is Culture Ireland, who have a huge GB 2018 showcase in 100 different events operating across Britain. Examples include Celtic Connections in Glasgow and also events in the Barbican Theatre. And we're partnering with Culturally Curious to ensure that we tap into that audience to encourage these people not just to come and experience sort of Irish culture, but come and experience the real thing after that. We've got great partnerships already with The Guardian, The Telegraph, Classic FM, Smooth Radio and Vivo. For example, on Vivo we had Codeline just this autumn, which projected out to 10 million social energisers in Britain. And that's the type of relationship we're going to deepen as we go through the uh, next part of 2018 to work on these media partnerships that give us great reach uh, into the British market. I touched on Brexit earlier on. One of the outcomes from our Brexit summit in Great Britain was to work with coach tour operators and the Coach Tourism Association to bring them on a fan trip to the North West. And we worked with Fulch Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland to make sure that they got to Dundee Gaul, Sligo, Cabin, Leitrim. There's a picture of them here at this is a house in Sligo. And we're delighted that Chris Tarrant is going to be coming over, uh, along with Angers Word on the 14th of December to Cabin to participate in championships there and get a strong message out. And those border countries are going to be very important for us in 2018 in the context of Brexit. Season extension and regional growth, very important to Britain as well. Working with partners like Ryanair, like Aer Lingus, like Flybe. Here's an example of the wild Atlantic wave of ocean that's out at the moment in Manchester, London and Scotland being seen by one and a half billion people. But it's always important to remember there are more than 150,000 seats every single week from Great Britain in the winter months. There are more than 225,000, quarter of a million seats every single week available from Great Britain in the summer months. So it's important that we have a programme all year round in that market. What does the figures look like at the end of next year? Uh, we see 0% uh, in Britain next year, but 1.5 billion of a spend, driven by 4.58 million visitors, a decline of 2%. It's important to bear in mind that currency plays a large role in this, by the way. Uh, we've seen currency variations forecasted from anything from 0.83 to 0.95. So it's important that we keep these figures under review, continue to update them, because they will change on a regular basis. But the four key messages that I mentioned are the absolute watchwords in relation to Britain for next year. In relation to Australia and developing markets, uh, another, a very, another very strong story, and there's two key points to make here. The first one is in relation to air access, and the second is in relation to sales missions. Ten years ago, Etihad Airlines started their first ever route into Ireland, four times a week from Abu Dhabi. We are so lucky now to see Emirates flying double dailies from Dubai, Etihad flying twice a day now from Abu Dhabi, Qatar has launched its first service from Doha uh, into Ireland, which connects us with 160 cities around the globe, and now we've got Cathay Pacific launched a service in Hong Kong four times a week from the 2nd of July. It means we've got 10% more air access next summer than we have this year. We also have the British Irish Visa Scheme operating in China. We also have the UK Short Stay Visa Waiver Program operating in 15 countries around Asia. We hope to see further visa liberalisation in our discussions with the Department of Justice heading into 2018. And uh, we're very hopeful as well that there'll be further air access breakthroughs in the Asian market as we head into 2018 but really great growth opportunities in these markets. Sales missions are also really important. I want to thank the industry who have been out on the road with us this year. We will have sales missions next year out to Hong Kong, sorry, to Australia and New Zealand. We'll be in China and Hong Kong in May. Uh, we'll be in the UAE, India, and we'll do our first sales mission to Qatar in February. That's some footage, that, by the way, from our recent sales mission to the UAE uh, that was conducted last September. Really successful mission for 12 members of the industry doing pioneering stuff, like bringing Ireland out to an audience of people that have never come before, but are interested to learn, looking for new destinations, meeting a very strong Irish diaspora, the way they, they give us great links, and with the likes of Emirates and Etihad in those markets, 10,000 seats every week from that part of the world, and a very, very high spend. So thanks to everybody that supported us on those sales missions. Partnership with seasonality, very important. It's important to bear in mind that these markets don't always look at the seasons the way we do. So down in Australia, as they're heading into their summer, the early bird season has kicked off. Here are some examples where we're working in cooperation with the carriers like Qatar, like Etihad, like Hello World, and Cathay Pacific, putting very strong fares out there, very, very good promotional fares, to drive business into Ireland in what is our softer season, in their strong outbound season. We see Australian developing markets finishing off a strong year next year with a spend of 734 million euros, up 8% to the island of Ireland, driven by 747,000 visitors, an increase of 6%. Now that's a trip around our main market areas, but we've got to remember there's an awful lot more that goes on. It's hard to cover everything in this presentation. And there are an awful lot of pan-market activities that go on, and I just want to talk about a few of those. Our digital footprint is more important than ever. 
A number of years ago, we invested in the Ireland.com portal, and this year we're welcoming in excess of 19 million visitors, and 4.5 million of those people will go on to industry sites and hopefully book their holidays to Ireland. We have that now in 14 different languages, the latest one being Japanese, and we'll seek to grow that in years to come, and it's fully integrated with our social media reach. On Facebook, we're now the fourth largest agency in the world with four million fans. They all have an average of 200 friends each. That gives us 800 million digital connections on Facebook. We're the third largest agency in the world on YouTube with 36 million views of our videos and the fourth largest in the world with Twitter with half a million fans. And we're growing rapidly in China with WeChat and Sign Weibo as well. So you take our social media reach, it's five million. But if you take all their friends, it's a digital global audience of one billion. So put that together with Ireland.com, we've got a very, very powerful machine. But complacency is the enemy of tomorrow, and my colleagues Mark Henry and Brian Hart will be talking about our Tours of Ireland e-symposium we'll be having on the 1st of March uh, in 2018, which really will be about shaping our strategic response uh, to where we are now and how we can keep that growth going into the future, and I'd encourage all of you to try and sign up for that if you possibly can. Now, digital is very important, but so is traditional. And I want to thank our colleagues in Fulcher Ireland and Tourism in Northern Ireland who work very closely with us on the traditional uh, overseas publicity programme. We have 22,000 international media in our database. We cultivate the relationships in the marketplace. Our colleagues here in Fulcher Ireland in the industry look after them when they're on the ground. They're just some, a small number of examples, really important ones, a lot of regional ones there as well. But if you were to buy the publicity that we get from all that traditional media, it would cost us 327 million. So the digital is important but overseas publicity as important as ever. I touched on screen tourism earlier on, and we are so lucky that we are in a position where we have capitalised on the most important project on the small screen in Game of Thrones, and the most important project on the big screen in Star Wars. And just to explain how this happened, this is collaboration in action. Screen Northern Ireland were successful in bringing Game of Thrones to shoot. We developed a relationship with HBO, the creators of the series, we signed a license agreement with HBO that allowed us to use the term Northern Ireland Game of Thrones territory and the logos. We worked with the campaign over the last three years. The campaign last year had a reach of 120 million people around the globe that would have cost us 23 million euros to reach. We could never afford anything like that. I'm delighted to say that that's won 30 international marketing awards, including, by the way, at the International Festival of Creativity in Cannes, which is the Oscars of the advertising industry, the Game of Thrones campaign against 41,000 other international adverts from the likes of Vodafone and big companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, won gold, silver and bronze. And I want to congratulate the team on a job really well done on that. In relation to...